Blood, destruction, grief. The suspected work of Al-Qaeda in Iraq. And yet, the foreign minister insists the horrors of 2007 at the height of the U.S.-led war are not coming back. The Iraqi people have not succumbed, in fact, to these atrocities. And I'm here to inform you and the administration that Iraq is not heading, is not crashing, and it's not heading to civil or sectarian war. But U.S. officials are worried. They accuse fighters with ties to al-Qaeda of trying to turn minority Sunnis and majority Shiites on each other. They also think the fighters are slipping in from Syria, already in the grips of a major civil war. Some officials suggest that's a recipe for disaster. Sunni and Shia extremists on both sides of the sectarian divide throughout the region have an ability to be able to threaten Iraq's stability if they're not checked. So the U.S. and Iraq held their fourth high-level meeting in Washington on Thursday. Security dominated an agenda that was supposed to focus on diplomatic and political relations. Because of the status of forces agreement, the U.S. can't offer Iraq any troops to help protect its citizens from outsider attacks. But it is training Iraqi security forces and it's selling the country weapons, including F-16 fighter jets. The U.S. is also trying to help Iraq develop economically. This is the first Boeing commercial jet for the Iraqi National Airline. The theory, a broad-based economy, gives the young population jobs and hope and less incentive to turn to extremist behavior. It's an ongoing conversation, but it's difficult. It's difficult to come overcome you know, 30 years of dictatorship and a status model economy into an open and globally integrated economy. But we are making progress, but this will be a very long-term effort. A cautiously optimistic view of Iraq's future only as long as it can find a way to withstand the violent pressures from within and across its borders. Rosalind Jordan, Al Jazeera, the State Department.